Hello, it is me, Mr. Hawk, uh, and we're going to be talking today a little bit more about trigonometry. Now, yesterday we, we introduced the three trigonometric ratios. We had sine, which was opposite over hypotenuse. We had cosine, which was adjacent over hypotenuse. And we had tangent, which was opposite over adjacent. And uh, yesterday we, we kind of just wrote those ratios. Um, like if it said, find the sine of A, we, we wrote that ratio and then we simplified. Um, and then we also, we spent a good amount of time talking about how to use those ratios to solve um, for missing side lengths. Because um, not, not every day are we going to get a special right triangle. Not every day is it going to be a 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90. Sometimes we might have a, you know, a, a 20 degree angle and we could use uh, those trig functions to solve for missing sides in those situations. But today, today we're going to be using trig to not solve for side lengths, but now we'll see how to use trig to solve for angles. So our topic is trigonometry solving for angles, and our essential question is how is, how is trigonometry used to solve for angles? This is a big question. Big, big question. So how do we use trigonometry to solve for angles? Well, let's start off with these top three. In fact, let's start over here with um, this sign with the negative one. So let's ignore that it says sine negative one because that's, that's confusing right now. And let's just look at that, look at that triangle. Now, yesterday, what I told you was arguably the most important thing to remember is to always follow this series of steps. You always start at your angle, right? You start at your angle and you draw an arrow. And the side that you hit when you draw that arrow is labeled O for opposite. That is our opposite side. Then we go to our right angle and we draw an arrow. And when we draw that arrow from the right angle, we label that side H for hypotenuse. And then our last side is labeled A for adjacent. So what two sides do I have numbers for? Well, I have the O and I have the H. Now, what was O and H? If you remember from yesterday, O and H go with sine. Sine is O over H. So how did we write that equation yesterday? If we were writing an equation with sine, we always wrote it like this. And do you remember what goes inside the parentheses? Inside the parentheses always goes the angle, which in this case is an X, which is weird. This is the new part of today. Um, and sine is O over H. So in this case, it is 22 over 38. So if you remember from yesterday, we, we had two situations. If X was on top, we multiplied. If X was on bottom, we divided. Well, today we're introducing the third situation. Sometimes the X might be inside the parentheses. And if it's inside the parentheses, this is where we have to use inverse trigonometry. Here's how we're going to do it. If it's inside the parentheses, in order to get it out, we have to do the inverse. And that's what the sine with the negative one means. Sine with the negative one is inverse sine. It undoes sine. Instead of plugging in an angle and getting a ratio, like a normal sine does, this one, you plug in a ratio and you get an angle. So how do we type this into our calculator? Because that's the, that's the only thing we have to do. So let's hop on over to Desmos. We're doing inverse sine of 22 over 38 and let's see how to type that in let me jot that down real fast so i don't forget what we're doing inverse sine of 22 over 38. okay so remember first thing first 
um, you always want to be careful that you are in the right mode Oop. okay so I'm gonna hit this wrench in the top right I'm gonna make sure that I'm in degrees notice how mine is in radians right now I'm gonna make sure that it's in degrees and then I'll type in functions and I want inverse sine of 22 over 38 and look at that that is going to be 35.4 if we round to the nearest tenth 35.4 so that means that that angle is 35.4 degrees all right and that's I mean like that's that's really about it we're gonna be just doing the same thing here um, on this next one we'll start at this angle we'll draw an arrow the side that we hit when we draw that arrow is the O if we draw the arrow from the right angle that is the H the last side is the A so look at this one on this one we have the A and the H now, A and H was cosine, which of course is clear because we're on the cosine labeled example, but still, that's why we're using cosine, because this one has A and H. So how do we write this? Inside the parentheses always goes your angle, which in this case is X. And like we wrote just up above, cosine is A over H. 15 over 45. So my x is inside the parentheses, so to get it out of there, I will do inverse. It's inside inverse. And this is 15 over 45. Inverse cosine of 15 over 45. I'll hop back over to Desmos. Functions. Inverse cosine. 15 over 45 this looks like it is 70.5 70.5 and there we go okay so we can see this one is labeled tangent but why is it tangent started our angle we draw our arrow that's the O Draw the arrow, that's the H. Last one is the A. So why is this tangent? Well, it's tangent because we have A and O, and tangent is the one that deals with O and A. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So let's write it out. Inside the parentheses goes our X, tangent is O over A, so tangent of X is equal to 10 over 18. X is trapped inside those parentheses. In order to get it out of the parentheses, we have to do inverse. Inverse tangent of 10 over 18. Let's see what that is. Inverse tangent of 10 over 18. Functions, inverse tangent, 10 over 18, 10 over 18, 29.05, which would be 29.1. Okay. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm okay with this. Okay, so now, of course, those ones were relatively easy because we could see that, right, they were labeled sine, cosine, tangent, so we knew what we were using. Um, the problems that you're going to be doing, you're going to have to kind of decide on your own which one you're using, and that's going to rely fully on your ability to draw these arrows. So, like on this one, um, on this first one, I start at the angle, right? I draw my arrow, that's the O. I draw my arrow, 
that's the H. My last one is the A. So just remember, sine is O over H, cosine A over H, tangent O over A. So let's take a look at what two sides we have. We have the A and we have the H. So A and H, which one does that go with? A and H is cosine. So this would be cosine. We've got to write out our equation here. Remember, inside the parentheses goes the angle. So this is cosine x is equal to 29 over 47 because cosine is a over h. And now we need to get the x outside of the parentheses. So we would do inverse cosine 29 over 47. And um, let's see what we get. Inverse cosine 29 over 47. Was that right? 29 over 47? Yes, 29 over 47. So functions, inverse cosine 29 over 47, 51.9. So x is 51.9. Okay, so at this point, guys, I want you to kind of pause the video, give these last three ones a shot, and then come back to the video um, when you think you've got some answers that you're ready to check. So pause here, try those next three, come back when you are ready to check. All right, hopefully you paused. I'm going to go quickly through these. This should have been O. This was H. This was A. If what we have is O and H, then we should have been using sine. Sine of X is equal to 12 over 31. That means that X is going to be inverse sine of 12 over 31. Inverse sine 12 over 31. Let's see what we get. Inverse sine 12 over 31. That's giving me 22.8. So x is equal to 22.8. For our next one here, draw the arrow, that's the O. Draw the arrow, that's the H. Last side is the A. So what do we have here? We've got an A and an O. A and O is tangent. So our equation should have been tangent of x is equal to 11 over 9 because we want uh, O over A for tangent. So that means that x should be inverse tangent of 11 over 9. Inverse tangent 11 over 9. Let's see what that gives us. Functions inverse tangent 11 over 9 gives me 50.7. X is 50.7. Last one, we draw our arrow. That's the O. Draw the arrow. That's the H. Last side is the A. So what do we have here? Well, we have O and we have A. So this is another tangent. Tangent of X equal to 18 over 23. So X should be inverse tangent of 18 over 23. Let's see what we get here. Functions inverse tangent 18 over 23. That's going to be 38.04. So 38, flat, just 38. Okay, so that wraps up your notes for today. Um, what you should be doing after this is heading to your practice in the Desmos slides. And then when you finish that up, um, when you finish that up, just raise your hand, I'll come around and give it a quick check and uh, then you can get on with your Canvas assignment for today. Okay.